Welcome to the Discourses for Higher Enlightenment channel and another session of the Medford and Anonymous series. Please stay tuned. to be giving Anonymous a call and it's always an inspiration to speak to Anonymous who is probably one of the few people I know who has really tapped into the depths of meditation and can give us some insights on why it can be uh, useful. All right. on my door. Yes, Anonymous. I couldn't think of anyone more able to answer the question of the value of meditation. Well, that's very kind of you. I, I, can, well, I can think of a lot who can explain it uh, or speak from a higher plane myself, although um, most of them, unfortunately, are in the spirit plane. I mean, I know them through their books. But... Uh, but yes, it's it's a very worthy topic. Uh, you know, I would like to say, to begin, for those who may have listened to the talks on the, the resurrection and, and that Good Friday when we first started this, open the door, something happened after we talked, and I gotta explain it as a very interesting synchronicity. I went out to my neighborhood afterwards, and something happened I never saw in it's nearly, uh, well, in, in, in just approach the body, 60 years now. And I'm shopping and I hear a, for those who haven't seen the, the, the YouTube segment, uh, we had, uh, we, we talked about uh, the, the meaning of the crucifixion and resurrection. And I was playing the Peter Gabriel, which actually, you know, which actually I'm on again, Peter Gabriel, uh, soundtrack to The Last Temptation. So I go out, I'm shopping after our talk, and all of a sudden I just hear a drum beat, boom, boom. And I said, it was slower than that, but I'm speeding it up for our conversation. And, and I turn, and I never saw this before, and I see a reenactment of Jesus on the way to crucifixion. And I did a double take because I had a, I remember our conversation and the music and I, I did a flashback to like 2,000 years ago. I actually got very emotional. I felt very sad. And of course I realized this is a reenactment. they fake, you know, fake whips and so on. But what's interesting is, you know, <clears throat> I never, and this is, they're, they're dressed to the part, you know. I had never seen that before in, in all my years here. So I thought that was very synchronistic with what we were discussing. So the topic of meditation, yes. <clears throat> and also I noticed on your, your, uh, you know, your web pages, I guess they call it, that one of the highest uh, responses to your endeavors to, to say something and help people out here, and, and then the whole self-discovery, because uh, obviously it's a new purpose is you had hundreds of responses to one of your talks on uh, people medicating with Oxycontin. And obviously it's an indication of uh, the concern of those who know people dealing with it or those who are dealing with it themselves. And it could be any other thing. I mean, it's just any drug is where I, what I see, any medication is it, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pacifier. And one of the reasons we pacify in such ways, whether through a liquid or solid or a gas, is because unfortunately most of us won't show them the magic key of meditation, which is the real way of getting high and the real way of, like the man said, I have meat you know not of, I have food you don't know of. Uh, and this is why people 
are so out of tune, out of touch, and feeling the pains and the gravity of the situation we're all in, uh, we, we seek a release, we seek a, a nourishment. So your question of meditation and what is it, uh, is, is to me really the door out of any mess that we can perceive or actually be in, whether physical, emotional, or mental. Unfortunately, uh, to it's like it's like there's a fire, and uh, you know the fire alarm box is being set off. So instead of uh, you know putting out the fire, what happens is instead of, what we do is we try and destroy the alarm box. And coming to destroy the fire alarm box doesn't put out the fire. So putting out so destroying the fire alarm box is like just basically avoiding the issue, and that's what drugs really do. It's just blinding us to what's know what's what's there and with not knowing how to face it because most of us again haven't been shown by our spiritual teachers how to experience God we just hear about God we've heard a recipe we're, they're talking a recipe to us when we're starving so for those of us who still use our will the most precious gift to overcome and know there's got to be a better way as an adult we have to take it upon ourselves you know and not totally alone because you know doing a conversation here, but there are great books out there, and there are great teachers. There are, I don't think there's many, but there are great teachers out there, as there are in any field, very few way up in the mountaintops, who, are, who have been sharing uh, ways out of this situation that we all find ourselves in. So, so what is, so meditation, first of all, I would say prayer is, they're, they're like two sides of the same coin. Like prayer is a, is a, is, is a talking to, you know, God or the higher self for those who don't like to work God. And meditation is a listening to the response. And it isn't just listening like we think of like with our ear. It's a listening where we actually experience. You know, we feel something along with the listening. So how to, so how to do it, why to do it, uh, how to prepare for it, you know, how not to eat something heavy for oh, at least three hours, what? So let's start with sort of like, we're in this physical body and we're looking for something, a peace and a joy mm. at we don't that we know not of, the food we know not of, to say again. Right. And so like you said, we not knowing that and not knowing how to get it, even though we are seeking it, then we look to the physical satisfaction of drugs which will sort of make us feel better for a little while, but then we, we, we end up looking like a zombie eventually because it's destroying our bodies. And you don't see it because whether one is building oneself up or tearing oneself down, it's like every day we, we partake of either a positive or a negative. It's like a page in a book. It's easily destroyed. It doesn't seem to be, you know, that important. It doesn't seem to be noticed compared to the whole book. But if somebody hasn't seen themselves who have taken drugs for a few years, they would see, you know, if they could see themselves when they started and, and see themselves a few years later, they would see the difference, but every day, looking in the mirror, you don't see it. It's such a subtle change that we don't see it unless, you know, somebody who's honest with us will, you know, say something to us that really cares for us. Not afraid to say something. It's, you know, like a friend will tell you what you need to know, not what just you, we want to hear. So, and that's yeah, a, it, and that's such a bad place because you can find yourself in a hole of addiction, where it's like I can't even stop doing this. Right. And then you don't find the peace you were looking for anyway. It's just sort of like makes you feel good, or it takes you down a darker road. So what we're talking about, then there is another way. There is a, a way of finding that peace that we know not of, and this is what it is through meditation. Well, I, it's true. And I think more and more we do know what it is of. But, you know, just going down that dark road you're saying, what we're looking for is to, even with the drugs, to, to forget, in a way, ourselves. But it's not forgetting. It's a, the real self is already pretty much forgotten deeper inside. But we're even looking to forget our, our masked self, our, our personality self, our egotistical self. And drugs can, you know, kind of, do kind of transcend. You know, we, 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 we get away from looking at it. Uh, you know, we feel medicated. You, you know, we feel like we're, we're, we're forgetting. But that forgetfulness can go to such a degree where we, we, 
we're forgetting to live that we we transcended our body but in a destructive way and and of course if there is an eternal being in us you know we have to pick that issue up again and deal with it in a more creative way you know it can't be done alone this is the thing that's it can't be done alone otherwise it would have been done you know that's why these 12 step groups which are very you know useful uh people a that they find out they're not alone in, in what they're dealing with you know with the disconnect and, and feeling miserable and depressed and, and sad and you know uh, disoriented and fearful so one seeks out these groups and you know and you think you're not alone and then there's a honest confessions and then it's turning it over to a higher power and that's where the, the humility comes in to admit i i need help i can't do it alone right. and that's a very valuable key even with the meditation it, it's it's an entry to a group to to be honest to be humble to say you know uh, uh i'm in trouble i'm not as strong as i thought i was i really need help and that's uh, that's the beauty of uh well, that first step i mean just to admit you know we're sinning or we're missing the mark you know and, and to, that admittance takes a lot of courage and a lot of vulnerability and it, and, and that is humbleness. It's admitting, you know, it's putting our head down and saying, you know, help me. That's a humbleness. Well, you said so, something that's interesting that, that most people might, it's so it's so basic, but most people miss, is that there's an eternal self within us that can connect us with God, which we're disconnected. And I suppose meditation will take us to that eternal well, self. Well, at this point, me, there's no more, <laughs> there's no supposing anymore. I used to compare it like a scientist, I would do it and then not do it. Now, first of all, I, those who may remember the other talk, yeah, it took me three months, three months, folks, to put a, a saddle on the wild horse of me to get still enough, to be still and know, as the saying goes. Uh, and it, it's a, it's a worthy. Wow, that's and, good. But, I like that. That's a great scripture. Be still and know. That's it. Be still and know physically, you know, emotionally, mentally. Uh, you know, we think we're free. Try and look at a, try and look at a tree or a flower, you know, for ten minutes. See if your mind doesn't get out of the present moment and go to the future or the past, and you see how little freedom we have. Even those who are not partaking of a lot of drugs, so to speak, but there's a lot of drugs even in the food. But even then, you'll say, you know, I'm not as in control of myself as I think I am. And that'll give you a little clue in a monkey racing mind how little control we actually apply to our own selves let alone to anything else in life so so meditation is uh, and again I, I, it's very important like I, I'd like to say uh, approaching the tools of meditation is like dealing with electricity you have to put rubber gloves and shoes on if you're working with electricity you know and, uh, and so when we're approaching the source of everything we need to it's not a thing to take lightly. So what would you do to present yourself, you know? And some ideas, of course, people do is they wash, they they may light a candle, they may put some incense, you know? They may put some music on in the background. Uh, but ultimately, it comes back to going into that inner realm and finding the strength that we don't have when we're on just the, the personality. We want to find our real individuality underneath those pages. We want to find the most of the book that consists inside of us. Now, even the Bible says, Know ye not have written the law upon your heart and mind? We are the Bible. People need to look up to this. We are the living Bible. Anything in that book is in us. That's, that's, we've been so transfixed and hypnotized to think everything is outside of us. The real, real answer is it's inside you, that the kingdom is within you. The law is written upon our hearts and minds. Go find it. Go dig for it. And if we die for those pearls in us, and we don't find them immediately, most of the times we don't immediately, don't blame the, don't say there's no pearls in the ocean. We haven't dived as much as we dive into the TV, or dive into a computer, or dive into the newspapers, or dive into work or dive into uh, gambling, or dive into going out there to try and, you know, get money together to uh, go buy our, our, our pacification. So the same amount of energy 
uh, it don't have to be the same, just even a portion of it. Put towards diving within is a saying. We take one step towards, you know, God, he'll take ten steps towards us. So it's a question of not only the quantity of time, it's a question of quality. So if you do a good ten minutes, twenty minutes a day, that is more than, you know, doing something else for five hours watching TV. You'll get more out of that 20 minutes than watching eight hours of uh, movies. I so find, you know what I find? That first five or ten minutes can be so discouraging because trying to tame that monkey mind, as you say, yes. it becomes, it almost seems like, when, when you first sit down and try to do it, uh, it almost seems like, uh, what, I, can, I can't do this. It's, it's not going to happen, like probably takes about a minimum of 20 minutes to really start to slow down the mind, the process. Right, well, that's for me. Sometimes even a half hour to relax my 600, even my muscles, to relax my muscles. And this is the key with the meditation, folks. It isn't just a mental thing. It's the breath, like in the beginning, God made two creations. Uh, everything of the earth, you know, the liquid, solid, gases, protein, carbohydrates, the, salt, the way it's put in the Bible is the clay. The first creation is of all the elements of the earth. And the second creation is, I would say, you know, the elements of the solar system, because we have, you know, neutrons, protons, and us electrons. The second creation, God, it sounds like even God was meditating. He breathed and she breathed the breath of life into our nostrils. See, the clue is right there. Breath. Breath. So, if you, the deeper the breath, and don't force it, it's like people doing asanas with their body. You want to do the same principle with breath. So you may take in, like right now, probably we could do only a count of five. That's five. You hold it, you let it out as much as you can, then you hold the limb pause, and you're taking gradually, within that 10, 15, 20 minutes, your breath is going to get deeper. You'll notice you're going to breathe more from your solar system, solar plexus. Now the muscles are relaxing. And what happens is the deeper the breath, the waves of the monkey mind, that monkey is going to stop jumping from branch to branch. It'll still jump, but it won't jump as much. So what you do also is you use an affirmation, because that monkey wants to get his banana. So the banana for the monkey is you use an affirmation, a thought. And you hold a positive thought, you know, whatever it is, God is spirit, seek such to worship, God is love, and I am love. Just hold a simple sentence, but dwell on those words and try and feel, feel the meaning of them. Now you can use visualization, you can use sitting for outdoors this time of year in front of a tree or by the, by the ocean or look at the horizon. But gradually you'll, you'll, you'll get a taste of it. And it should be a little difficult because you're approaching, again, we are approaching such a loving you know, field of, uh, of such a loving force, if you will. Uh, that uh, we're kind of pruned in the process. And, uh, and it's like saying, uh, God saying, you really want me or do you want the things out here in the world? And if we, we, we're too impatient, we're gonna run back to the things in the world. And, but if you persevere and you really stay with that, that like he's your best friend that would, I promise would never let you down, never let me down. I let myself down, others will let me down. But like going to nature, going inside to meet, our creator, you will never, I promise, will never be let down. In fact, you're uplifted. But sometimes he prunes us in the waiting process to see if you really want me, you want to run back to my gifts. So persevere, what do you got to lose? What's in the other direction other than destruction and, and, and distraction and suffering, more suffering, without the palliative, without the alleviation of it, unless you're doing it through drugs, which, which is only going to take you out of life a lot sooner and cause a lot of pain in your inner realm and, and, and your family or friends or acquaintances, you know, even your pets, you know, that would, that would, you would just bring pain to them, you know. So, what, so, can what, you, can you run us, can you run a, just give us a little taste of it and do that again, uh, the breathing and the, um, and the, uh, and the affirmation, just give us a little, and then maybe at the end we could do a, a, a longer one. Well, you're sitting still. And by the way, you don't want constriction in your, your solar plexus here yourself. You got a belt, people with your pants, or you got a, uh, a button. Loosen it up, uh, even a zipper. If you're in your house, of course, you could be much more comfortable. Uh, you, have to, you know, so you, you, 
you want to get out the tension from your neck, you may do some neck turns one direction slowly, maybe four times, and the other direction a few times, and you'll hear the cracks, you know, and then you may move your shoulders in circles, and you're going to hear the cracks. And then you, it's very key to keep your spine straight, and always look straight ahead, don't look down, and you just take, and, and I always would start with a prayer, you know, as far as asking God to, you know, protect us and guide us. Because if anybody really perseveres in this, you're gonna, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna go places, and you're gonna get more charged up. So you ask, because the difference between God and the dictator is, dictators force themselves on us. God never forces himself. We have free will to even rebel, just as some angels did. And and it's even free will to stay attuned, just as angels are doing also. But even in the earth. So if we ask for his loving protection and guidance as we seek deeper communion, you know, that is a very, that's the way I started. Because if you really go, some people may go even beyond the 20 minutes eventually, and you really take flight deeper, because the deeper you go, like the Beatles said, the deeper you go, the higher you fly. So come on, come on. So, and, so that's, a, that's the way I started, and then I'll do the breathing, and, uh, What's that I'll breathing again? A, well, the breathing, I'll, I'll do a count, like I, I just said now, I take in, I can only do a count of five. Eventually, it'll, it'll be five in, maybe five out, uh, but don't do it quickly, hold it in, as much as possible, without getting uncomfortable, then you breathe out. Even when you breath, you breathe it out. I didn't breathe in yet. Let there be a pause, without getting uncomfortable, then you breathe in. Gradually, it'll be like the tides coming in the way they come in or go out. It goes slowly, but slowly that breath is going to go deeper. And eventually, you'll see, you'll be able to take a breath of 30 or even 40. And, and that's when you're going to be really still. And that's what you're going to get to know. Oh, yeah, I've noticed experience. there's even a moment where you almost don't need to breathe. Like, like that's you, true. You, you, that's it slows down to such an extent between breaths that you can actually that's hold that breath longer. And it's sort of like, right. you, and then, right. you start, then you start feeling a peace. Right. Because you, the, and then you're breathing the, in again. Yes, that's what happens. Because when you're taking that deep breath, you're obviously just on a, a you know, physical level, you, you're taking in so much oxygen or prana, light force, that you took in so much beyond the five, maybe you're doing a count of 40, so you don't have to take in that breath like you do five and then five. You, you, you're taking it in, you're holding it. It's like a chewing up of, uh, you know, taking a big bite off of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, uh, cantaloupe or something. And so you got more to chew on. And, and that's, a, that's and a moment where you realize, well, maybe this might be better than the drugs. Well, well, you know, if you touch again, that, again, I don't <laughs> like, want to mislead anybody to think it happens instantaneously because it no. took me three months. But I mean, you get taste along the That's way. That's what I mean. You might get a taste where you go, "Whoa, this oh, is not too bad." Yeah, when you get the taste, you're gonna say, "Whoa!" It's like I took something, and you did. You took spirit, but you, you, and that will encourage you to keep it going and keep it going. And gradually, what happens is, the more you, you know, the more you, you immerse yourself in the light. You don't have to turn around and struggle with the darkness and addictions. They'll go away on their own. Even if you know you, you find it hard to give up the cigarettes, you, you'll find you're smoking less, and and uh, eventually it'll just go. I I know of a program with Swami Sachidananda who opened Woodstock. He had a book called Prison Yoga, and there are people in prison in the 60s, 70s who are on heroin, heroin, and just through the asanas or the the physical postures which deal with cleansing the body and activating glands the, and the, the meditation they got off of heroin so anybody who wants to see this that the names of the people who actually partook of this there's that book by Swami Satchitananda on uh, prison yoga and uh, it's an incredible read I mean it's really beautiful to show this actually this isn't just you know hot air this is actual real food to get away from the fake, you know, pacifier. So, you know, I was writing, I, I actually, I was doing some writing recently, you know, I gotta admit it, and it's re re very, totally, really fresh, and to be even honest to you and the folks out there, I, I, I was writing it this morning, and I just jotted down some notes, you know, but I, I would like to give some ideas what meditation 
you know, consists of beyond the practice of it. What 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 is it like? So one is it's listening to the divine within us and experiencing it. It's a real nourishing food instead of a pacifier. Well, I already said that one. It's uh, growing a pair of wings so as to fly towards the summit within us and get a better overview of our lives and others. It's a bridge upon which to cross over from our conscious through our subconscious to the promised land of our superconscious or cosmic self, the part of us folks who watches ourselves in our dream. It's not dream, it's not sleeping, it's watching our dreams, the witness within us. It's the eternal image and likeness we are made of. The right stuff to use the movie's title about astronauts and their preparation and, and their travels. It's, it's a lifeboat to keep us afloat upon the waters of life. This almost sounds like something we, we need to hear rather than the political rhetoric. It's both. It's the, it's the spiritual, the political, and the personal. And the meditation isn't even just to keep our heads in the sand. People may do that, and they're not going the full length because it's to receive the love and then to go out and sh well, first with the prayer, and then to go out and share it. You know, and, 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 and not everybody's going to be, especially in this life, anywhere on the level of a mountain. But you know, we can be kind to our animals. We don't have to eat the animals. Uh, we we can be kind to our neighbors. We can go out and, you know, help an old lady uh, with her, her bags, you know, or, or smile at somebody, you know. It's not, not the big things, but those things are seemingly little things which are, 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 are steps along the way to the summit. They are just as important as getting to the summit. Many people stress themselves out thinking we have to do great things. If we all did the little things in life, you know, we would have a much better society. Well, those works, those works seem to follow more readily after our um, uh, meditation uh, or connection with the eternal self. Right, because you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't hold on to a good thing. That's the thing about good things. You, you just feel like love. You want to share it. Love is meant to be shared. You don't want to hold it in and keep your, la your light under a bushel. That's, that's something else. That's... that's uh, you know, that's a fear, that's a, a isolation, that's a, uh, you know, that's a selfishness, you know. Love is selfless, and selfishness is, well, selfishness is what, uh, take a look at what the bankers are doing, and, you know, what is, uh, and, and, you know, trying to save money on a, a, war, a clean water system. You know, I heard the other day on a radio show that uh, if you take away one plane that costs like a trillion dollars, practically. I heard that. I know, couldn't believe that. Yeah, you, we could get all our water systems in on this country renewed, the pipes changed and everything. One plane that they don't need, that they call it and God we trust, but they got to make more planes to satisfy these greedy folks that never have enough, because that's the nature of greed. It, it, it's a bottomless pit. They never have enough. They that's like an compete. addiction as well. That is an addiction. That, that's a distraction too. That's as dangerous, even more dangerous than somebody just taking drugs because these are people taking drugs of the ego that is not just affecting them, which it is, but with that plane dropping bombs on women and children, that's affecting others. Now somebody else is in pain and destroying themselves is one thing and that's not, that's not the right way either, but they end up going out and hurting other people, most of them. And so those folks, those Hannibal Lecters, those educated, and knowledge, not wisdom, with their suits and fancy language and fancy schools, the ones who are doing that and taking that knowledge and not using it with wisdom, they are the most dangerous people. They don't want the Frankenstein looking ones, they're the Dr. Frankenstein. That's why Hannibal Lecter, that, that man is one of the scariest portrayals because he looks educated, he's a doctor, he, he had Beethoven, and yet he can eat somebody's brain while listening to classical music like Ray Liotta, that is the most dangerous one. And they look yet the most brightest, they can speak the, 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 the languages. They are more dangerous than somebody that we put in jail for smoking a joint or taking acid or whatever. Uh, and yet they own these companies that are killing hundreds of thousands of people a year and uh, they get raises, they got bonuses. They smiling with their smirky smile and uh, but they all answer. 
As they get closer to their deathbed, believe me, they're, they're all gamblers. They're gambling on Wall Street. That's what it is. It's a gamb- ca- casino, you know, capitalism. And as they get closer to realizing they can't take their money with them and they ain't, they don't have the uh, technology to keep them alive forever, uh, they got to wonder if there's something there that outlasts even water, our being, our soul. Do so they, they really, need this as much as, as anyone else. <laughs> well, uh, they do. And, and actually, uh, you know, their families. I, 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 it's a part of me when I get away from the anger part, underneath my anger sometimes, and even Jesus got angry once, uh, I feel sad for them, you know, because they don't know. They don't really know. If they really knew what they're doing, what would be coming back on them. And it really is, if you really look in their eyes, despite all their houses and foods and, you know, servants and planes and trains and boats. If you really look, and some of them are good actors. Like a good actor doesn't really feel, you know, what, you know, the part. You know, they don't, you know, they may play a murderer, but they're not a, they don't come out of the job and murder somebody. But some of them are so, uh, you know, or Ben Kingsley playing Gandhi, you know, you don't come out of there and go lead a salt march or a march, uh, you know, to get clean water or something, or, you know, but they can look very, very, uh, you know, convincing, but if you really look and you sense with the soul, see, this is the importance of meditation. You get an inner knowingness, a sense beyond the logical brain, beyond the deceptions of, of, of what you see and hear, and you may see somebody just nice and hear them speak nice, but you may not even know that person. That, that person can be a murderer, you know, even the, the women who go out with these psychotics, or, you know, they, they, the, uh, you know, the, um, what do you call those, uh, the folks that are, uh, it's a pathology, isn't it? They put a label on it. Uh, but anyway, these folks who could be even charismatic, and, and, and yet they take the woman home and, and uh, drug them up and, uh, you know, so how do you know? This is the practicality. This stuff is not, you know, airy-fairy. This stuff is not spaced out. It's spaced in. It's a, it's, these, so that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, there's an, in, there's an inner sense of things. An, an inner, inner sense, uh, yes. In, inner what do you call, uh, don't they call it intuition? Intuition, that's right. So, also, so, so meditation is building your cocoon in a sacred aloneness. By the way, and you go Whoa. from loneliness, this is the key thing, folks. You go from loneliness to actually feeling alone. And then with the aloneness, you feel the, you feel what will put you here. You feel a sacred aloneness, and an aloneness that you don't actually feel lonely. Well, that's that's actually interesting. That's something we're all running away from, that aloneness. Oh, man, that was such a, that was such a turning point to feel the difference between loneliness and aloneness. So as to be metamorphosized into a lighter and new you. Uh, meditation is a, a building of a, an armor around us of such a force field of love, a love to, so strong so as to withstand the assaults from those heavy with negativities from their lack of such a reforming and transmuting practice such as meditation. Whoa. So We all experience it, that. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. I mean, I get out of tune certain parts of the day, and I say, oh, oh, I know where to go. I know where to get tuned up. So it's a finding the everlasting treasures of a golden radiance contained in each of us. It's a treasure no one can ever steal. <laughs> it, it's, it's the real medication for our minds and emotions without the side effects. Wow, is that it's what Jesus home. meant when he said, uh, store up treasures in heaven, not on earth? That's right. That's right. That's right. That thieves would. That he also said that thieves would not would not be able to steal from. Uh, it's it's our own private plane. Hey, you folks, you want your own plane to travel to places of such beauty and refreshment that will surpass the one's best travels and sights. Wow. And you can do it more than once a year, and not worry about the luggage or the mechanical problems on the plane. Yeah, you know what that costs to just buy and to and to uh, refurbish and to and all yeah. the effort that you'd have to put into that. Yeah, when yeah, this is free, right. this is just free. Right. That's right. It's free. It's free. There's no charge. I mean, some people charge a lot of money to learn these things, but it's free. You know, Jesus never said, "Hey, you want to come with me? Uh, you got a thousand dollars for the weekend?" Uh, right. you, know, uh, you didn't do that. So. That's kind of like a, a, a spiritual materialism. Uh, so, and you know, I gotta tell you, I've been to Hawaii, it's like a slice of heaven, it's so clean and beautiful. And I, I tell you honestly, 
when I, me- when I go deep in meditation, the beauty of the spirit, because everything comes from spirit. Everything created is from the unseen. When you go inside and you're communing with the unseen, you feel it. It's as much as, and more than going even, I gotta say this, even than going to Hawaii. And you get access to it every day. It's finding the genie within us, and finding the, the, rubbing the magic lamp of our bodies, you know, with the meditation, and finding that genie within us. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's the highest form, I get this, it's the highest form of creativity that's possible besides birth. Wow. It allows us to mature into our highest realized self. We're still being born. They say born again. I say you're born again and again and again and again. You're budding, you know, you're Buddha budding. Your, your petals are still coming out. So am I. I'm not all there. You know, I can still, I still have a lot to go. But I realize, you know, I know where the mountain is. And I know the direction is up. Which way is up? <laughs> It's the key to open the door to freedom, not found in anything, anything, you know? That, 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 it's, it's a magic key, you know? It's a key that everybody has, the key of your will, the key of a practice. It's, it's a keynote, you know? You, you, you change your frequencies, you change your aura, you change your vibration. By the way, I, I, I guess it's a good part, it's a good point uh, to say, where, you know, there's a very, very practical uh, insight I got from Edgar Casey. See, I, I don't get it all myself. I got, you know, I know what the teachers are. You know, I'm, I'm humble enough to admit that I don't know it all. And I look around and I, I, I look for who's been able to manifest God. Not just talk about him, manifest. And so, uh, I, I, I got a... Um, before I get to it, I found another page with three more. Uh, it's allowing the instruments of our bodies and minds to become so attuned to our spiritual source that more and more the music of our lives will become more harmonious to ourselves and others, including the animals and the plants. <laughs> I know when I meditate, I gotta tell you, my cat, he comes over. I don't call him, my cat comes over if I'm laying on the floor sometimes, and he just Reaches his head on my outstretched arm, you know, and, and just right up against my body, you know. Uh, like this, as I said in the, uh, I think in the other talk, he, the Oliver, he, he, he came. That's the first breakthrough. He was so traumatized with the different experiences of being out in the street and another cat that traumatized him when the lady had him or when he was in the pet store. The first breakthrough, folks. I was sitting in meditation with my back away from the back of the chair. And this is a cat that was hiding, that was traumatized. He came out on his own and he jumped on that chair behind me at the base of my spine. <laughs> and that, he sensed it, see, he sensed it. And ever since then, you know, we, the buddies. So, I've seen Oliver, he's fabulous. Yeah, Oliver's a beautiful cat. Uh, 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 I, so, okay, now yoga, a lot of people are doing their physical asanas and they're, they're dissecting things and, and, and that happens in America much times, too much. We dissect everything. We don't keep it whole or holy. So it's the essence of yoga. The preparation for yoga, meditation is, is the asanas. What is asanas? Asanas are you know, the poses of the body. Oh, okay, right. So I know a woman once, uh, you know, could scratch her nose with her leg on behind her head, so to speak. And, but she was still in the mind, you know, you know, very ready to go to the, go to the medicated route with a psychiatrist, you know. And so that's only the preparation work. When, yeah, you feel relaxed, you feel good, there's hormones made, you're stretched out, there's no energy um, hidden up and locked up in the body with the tensions. You know, you, don't, you feel less of the fighting of the ease or you feel less of the disease. So, but that's still an outer door to go deeper. And so the, the essence of yoga is really a union with the divine. It prepares you those postures to meditate and stretch your mind. Not just the body, stretch the mind. I that like that up. analogy. That could be something, a, a, um, something you can use in meditation as doors opening up. That's right. Going doors from one door up. to the next. That's right. There's many doors. Deeper, deeper, deeper. 
Excuse me? Going deeper, deeper as you go. That's right. Deeper and deeper. It's like many pedals. Using that key to unlock the door. Unlock the door and be free some more. You know, so here's the last one I got. It's discovering our spiritual mind, not our carnal mind. Discovering our spiritual mind, which is differentiating from our brain. Discovering our spiritual mind and our eyes and our spiritual ears to know and see and hear more than the logical mind can ever explain. And this will guide us and warn us in, a, in, in, in love's grace. You know, you get, it's very practical. You know, I gotta say, the other, just a couple of days ago where I worked, uh, a young lady, a beautiful young lady from California, you know, was riding her bike to work and some driver uh, coming out from where I work, he was on his cell phone and he came out the wrong way. Instead of coming, going out the right way, which is towards the right, he went out to the left, which is the entry point, And he was using it as an exit point. And this young, beautiful woman coming with her bike got ran over with somebody. Really? Yeah. You know, I still feel the sadness of it. You know, with a cell phone, distractions, not being present in the moment. And, and I don't know if she's on life support or whether she's passed on. I don't know. But this is what the monkey mind does. This practice can save lives. I'm sorry, but I don't have to be sorry, but I, you know, tears are sweating our heart. I, I feel for this person. I, didn't really, I don't even know her. I might have seen her once. She's been here almost a year. We've got like 500 people where I work. You know, needless, needless. These are the pains of life, life and suffering. You know? Needless the suffering. Out, it, excuse me? Needless suffering. Needless, needless suffering. You know, beautiful woman, you know, run over with a truck. So, folks, this stuff is practical. It keeps you in the moment. It gives you strength. It gives you inspiration. It gives you joy. It gives us compassion. That's why I, I can feel for somebody. You know, I don't even know. That's love, you know? It's not, uh, you know, it's not something and that's the thing, you feel, you can feel the pain of life, but with opening up, which we feel anyway, without doing meditation, but you, you feel it more beyond yourself, you feel somebody else's pain. But you, you feel the joy, you know, you're not numb. And it reminds me of a saying to Casey, you know, it's not all of life to live, you know. That woman didn't live all her life while she was living. She didn't open all the doors. So she's a beautiful soul. And it goes the other way. It's not all of death to die. Because we are part of the eternal. You know? And, and so many people throw in the towel before. We've been broken families, you know, broken jobs. You know, daddy was uh, daddy wasn't there. Mommy neglected us, you know. Uh, we were uh, teased and, and bullied as kids. The school didn't give us musical instruments to play. They didn't let us paint. They they tried to get to our logical brain as soon as possible. Get us away from our, our intuitive artistic self. You know, 40 kids in the class instead of a few. We gotta have the money to destroy. We gotta have the money to destroy. We, we, we use the money if we really believed in God, these leaders that put their hand on that book when they become president. If they use the money to rebuild our society, people would want to come here. You don't have to beat them over the head with an army to say that we got the better way. The example alone would speak. The example alone. That's fear talking. When they want to hit somebody with that that, that, that missile or something, or a bomb, or assassinate the leaders, or bribe them, and so the poor get poorer, and the rich get richer on a certain level. That's fear. Despite their brave, angry talks, they are afraid. Underneath their facade, they are afraid. They're greedy. 
they're selfish. They're anything but Christian. Anything but Christian. Well said. Wow. So don't look for the leaders, you know. Don't don't look to them. You know, it's in you. It's in you, it's in you. Despite all of that, the promise if you can't believe a man at the height of his life who gave it to tell us to wake up with love. Who gave his life to tell us to wake up. If you can't believe a guy like that in the history of the world, who at the height of his manhood didn't look to be an old man like Buddha, you know, not to take away from Buddha giving up his kingdom and searching for truth. He was up on the mountain, way up beyond, beyond me. I admit it. But he didn't get to the top in terms of where he was such a threat that they came after him when he was, in, he was 33 years old. That man showed us the way out. Even his own disciples fell asleep on the last night. He said, pray and meditate with me. They saw hundreds of healings. So don't think we're going to get there right away. It's, the disciples themselves were weak, and they lived to the man for three years. So give it time. Give it time. Moses has worked on for 40 years. You know, the Pentecost, we're in it now. The Holy Spirit is being offered to each of us. It's a spiritual democracy. Don't look for it in the, in the, in the slogans and the campaigners out there. That'll pass with their lives. And anybody who's strong enough, like Kennedy, to, to go against the Fed, they, they, they kill our leaders. That's the way the world is. They kill our leaders. But take their words and act upon them. Take their words and act upon them. Do your meditation. Eat good. Don't support that system of debt. Get off the meat. Get off the sodas. Get off the coffee. Get off the cigarettes. All the things that they know kill us and give diabetes. Even the cigarettes, they know it kills us, but it's promoted still. It's given out there. And it's killing hundreds of thousands of people a year. But folks, you know, this is an Aquarian age. It's an age of knowing. It's an age of waking up. It's an age of not believing in God, not hoping there's a God. It's an age of knowing through your own experience. Transcend your five senses. You know how many times I've seen people, you get dreams that come true. I don't need to blow my own horn on what's happened. All I know is, I know from my own experiences, people like, well, especially Jesus or Yogananda or Edgar Kishi, you know, they, 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 you know, they, what they're saying is true. You know, look for the ones who won't even charge you. They're the best teachers. You got no money, they still help you. They're selfless. We're not that dumb, you know. Stop beating yourself up or pretending to be dumb. We are not that dumb. We have a part of God that's already knowing everything I'm speaking on, 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 on this conversation to you. You would never recognize what I'm saying to be true unless you have the truth in you. But do the practice, get your strength, overcome. Don't let these wayward folks, don't give them your money, don't give them your life. Because the people who are manipulating us, they don't deserve our loyalty. They don't deserve our energies. They're vampires taking our energy. Oh, it's another distraction, actually. Like It's a big distraction, but it's a distraction that, that is connecting with the pain and, and, and you know, aye, aye, aye. you unfulfilled this. So that's what I used to look at. Like I used to say, you know, like I used to say, I meditate and what's it like? How do I feel? What did I dream? Who did I meet? How did I, did I react to them? Impulsively, did I respond to them? Did I feel stronger dealing with, you know, what's out there? Or did I feel weaker? And I would do that to scientists. I would do it for a while, then I wouldn't do it. And after a while, I'd say, why, why even go back and forth? Because when I still do it, I feel worse, you know? I, I, I said on the other talk, I had a cold once for three weeks. I couldn't meditate. I've been, I've been meditating for quite a few decades now. And I, I had a cold for like two, three weeks, and I couldn't meditate. I prayed, you know, but I read inspirational literature. I heard my music. I went out to nature. I tried to do my good deeds. I did my good deeds. But I felt like I was going deeper and deeper, you know, still into a darkness, into a, 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 like going down the mountain, you know, and feeling a heaviness. And I said, whoa, this feels terrible. I feel like I'm going into hell. And it was very valuable because it helped remind me what people feel like who are not meditating. It reminded me that's a place of suffering. 
reminded me of the hopelessness that's involved with that and, and wanted to do something to alleviate it. So and can you can you I give can, us a, a a slow lesson on going diving in like? Well, all right. To repeat it, I you find a place. You, if you're in the house, get some let the air come in. Get a, your most you know set up your little area with a candle or a nice picture. The music we would discuss not eating heavily for a few hours. Open up whatever constrictions you have in your clothing, uh, particularly mainly in your, your, your solar plexus area. <clears throat> you know, you say your prayer for guidance and, and protection. <clears throat> I say this, I say, Holy Mother, Father, Spirit. There's one holiness. In the name of your only begotten Son, the Christ. Christ in all ages, Jesus in one. Holy Mother, Father, Spirit is one holiness. In the name of your only begotten Son, the Christ. And I do say Jesus. Being a, an example in recent times of such sacrifice at such a young man with age. And that deeper loving, conscious, cosmic communion with you. And then I start, we start to breathe in. Take a breath in, hold it without getting uncomfortable, light it out. Now if you're indoors, you're looking at your outer items, candle or picture. If you're outdoors, you're looking at a tree or a flower, whatever, or the ocean or the mountain top. You're looking at one point, you're keeping your mind focused on one point in this, on one object. And you just keep the breathing going gradually. Trying to feel, you're trying to feel your soul. You're asking the Holy Spirit, whatever word you got for God, you know, communicator, comforter, to come and be with you for the drop of ocean and us to join the ocean. Within you, not outside, within you. The kingdom is within. People keep getting away from that. They keep instructing us away from that. And you want to feel, you want to feel that love. You want to feel that quiet. Relaxation of the body, you want to feel the mind focused on one point. Didn't you say something about as you breathe in, you could almost, you could use a, uh, I don't know if it's a visualization of you rowing? You can use the rowing, yeah, it's creativity. You can use whatever image you like. Don't just listen to what I say. Make up your own. I like you, if you're, you're breathing in, your wings are getting bigger. Oh, you're going to oh. take flight. Oh, it's yeah. Good light. Every religion talks about the light, whether it be Native American, whatever. Chinese, Japanese, don't matter. Everybody comes from and comes eventually to speak of the light, but you get an inner radiance, you know? And it's already there, so you can visualize. And you can visualize yourself sitting in the sun. I like that one, right? You visualize yourself shining like the sun. You know, you're radiating, you're radiating joy. You're radiating love. So ultimately, you visualize, but the essence of it, the horse that leads that chariot, is the spirit. Even the sun shining, they come from the invisible spirit. Think of the suns in the, in the galaxies, the billion galaxies that they see so far, which is well, probably 1% or 1%. That might be too high a figure. You know, uh, uh, and, and there's a billion stars in one galaxy. You know, and there's a billion galaxies. You know, so. They all, come, all of that even comes from the invisible. Everything seen comes from the invisible. But you can feel the beauty of, of the grace, of the love that, that all the creativity comes from. So ultimately, you, you go to a place of even where you're beyond the visual, you're just concentrating on the, the, the spirit. And yes, out of that spirit, out of that spirit communion, you will be more creative, whatever you do. You come out, you paint. You may see visuals when you, you know, it's not to be discarded, but you may see a beautiful image, you may hear a beautiful piece of music. And of course, the great artists, and just any artist, try and bring it back. But even then, if you read their lives, they bring back a segment of what they, they saw or experienced or heard. So, you, you, you know, it's good to bring that back and share these gifts with people. But even beyond the greatest, you know, 
what we conceive as the five senses is the sixth sense, the spirit. Thank you.